you need to get started on your personal statement. That's all I'm here to help you with. More specifically, I am a Gilman scholar, which means I spent a lot of time writing an essay to get someone to get on my side and provide me funding to go abroad. I went to London. Pip pip. <laughs> they didn't sound like that. I decided to apply to Gilman five days before the application was due. Rough, I know. Um, these are all the drafts that I made when in three days of writing this essay. Honestly, even though I would say I enjoy writing, I also hate it. It is a love-hate relationship because revision is constantly there. So the best piece of advice I ever received, which is, should be your first piece of advice to follow, is just to get anything down. Whatever you write first is gonna be a steaming pile of wonderful news. <laughs> so the first thing you wanna do is get all of the prompts, separate them by sentences, and go at it like you would any high school speech class where you go to answer each question and you don't have to put too much thought into it yet. Just if someone was asking you this in person, what would you tell them or what you wish you would have told them? The first thing I did was just pull out the doc, answer all these questions. Some of the questions include um, really simple ones that you should know the answer to already because going into applying, you should have already looked up what program you want to go to and why. Why doesn't necessarily mean that you just want to go to Spain or you want to go to England like me, but it's instead what do you truly think you can get from this educational experience? Because if you're going to spend money to go out that you should have a good reason other than, hey yo, I want to drink tea with the queen didn't happen. I had to justify why London was the best place to get this type of education. And what I said is diversity and representation are so important to me that being in one of the most ethnically diverse places in the world was probably the best space to explore that. It's really digging up what's so special about that country. Think about talking to a relative who's asking, why are you going across the world? when you can have a perfectly good education here. I think one important note to mention is for anybody that has perfectionist tendencies, when, especially when you're in the middle of writing, you'll have the temptation to edit as you go. Don't do it, just keep going. Just getting any words on the paper is the biggest accomplishment you can do in a couple of hours. And even if you don't have hours, if you're having a couple minutes a day to work on this, it is important to recognize that this is going to go through many edits. You writing down all the prompts and then answering all the questions are the puzzle pieces to the grander picture of who you are or who you want to present to the scholarship uh, committees. Because they have no idea who you are. To them, they're you're only going to be an, like a paper essay that gets given to them. And they're out here giving tremendous opportunity. So what someone told me was that each in the committee, there's a person that each gets um, a, a couple of essays. I don't know if it's 100 or 50. And they have to read through them all day. And what you want to do is get one person to read your essay and completely agree that there's no doubt that you deserve to go, to go abroad and to receive this funding. So we've gotten you to put down at least some sort of structure, not a structure actually, but some sort of building bricks for what your full essay is gonna be. So what I think is important is not to start thinking about an intro body and conclusion, but start thinking about what more what is most relevant to put at the beginning and to put at the end. I always think in the form of beginning and end rather than introduction and conclusion, because then there's so much pressure to sum up everything at the start when you haven't even done the groundwork and the middle work. So I would say a good place to think that you're starting is you're just starting with the body as typical body in English class that everybody used from sixth grade to 12th. <laughs> that the middle chunk of the part that is the most important, that's what you just have to get out first. So start going through all your answers from all of those questions from the statement of purpose prompts 
and highlight information that you think is definitely gonna go into the final essay. Okay, I think the next thing is something that comes off as very scary at first. It is overwhelming when people ask you what your goals are, at least it was for me. So guess what? <laughs> You're gonna have to write it in your statement of purpose, some sort of goal you have right now. I know that establishing long-term goals is sometimes hard, but I think a big question to ask yourself, at least the one that I asked myself in order to get something on the paper of what my goals were, was if I could have all my finances paid for, I had no financial trouble whatsoever, what would I do for the rest of my life? In the end, what did I want the career in the future to encompass? And just write it down. But I think a big part of it is answering why. I had to act like the five-year-old cousin that will never stop asking you why at the end of every explanation. Because to be honest, when, it's not to say that the scholarship committee is a bunch of five-year-olds, but they don't know anything about you. They don't know who you are, they don't know what you've been through, and it's your job to help them le lead them through that narrative that has been your life up until now because you want them on your side and you want them to believe in you, which sounds really cheesy, but when you have one person in a huge committee who has your essay in their hands and gets to decide whether or not it's worthy of taking to the next level, you really want to capture their attention. Take the space to really appreciate yourself. And I know it's very easy to self-deprecate and say, oh my god, me, to anything that's negative, but I think if you really want this, you're gonna have to really prove that you're worth it, because I bet you are worth it. If you're looking for scholarships, it means you have something to offer. And no matter who you are, no matter what you do, no matter how much experience you have, you are worth it. Something that I got a lot of notes on when I started writing my essay was that I didn't describe my need enough. So with Gilman, a big part of their selection is I think you have to be a Pell Grant recipient, which proves your financial need through financial aid and um, like whatever FAFSA stands for. That's another thing you want to keep in mind is the requirements for you to be eligible to apply to the Gilman Scholarship there are a couple of things that determine your financial need. Even though you've turned in a financial aid application and you have proved that you do have financial need. So many people around the country are in the same spot as you are, but you have your own story to tell about what it is particularly that outlines why you're struggling or why it is a little hard to imagine yourself to pay almost 10 grand to go across the world. So it gets hard. It really did. I think I had to soul search emotionally on what inspired me and why things seem so hard. Literally nothing is off limits. I had a student come in for an essay workshop who outlined everything I told them to, but then out of nowhere right at the end of the workshop talked about how they work full time while going to school. And they mentioned that they do help out their family to keep afloat with bills. And that is such a huge part. I think for a lot of people that have financial need, it just becomes a second nature that this is normal, that, and it is. But at the same time, there's plenty of people that don't aren't going through the same experience that you are, and it is difficult, and you are amazing for doing it. <laughs> so nothing's off limits to that. Just outline a small bit of yourself in relation to what is your relationship with money. Hopefully you're not irresponsible, <laughs> but um, everyone has their struggles. Money is a hard topic to talk about, but I think being vulnerable in that sense will really give you the edge on being moved to the next level with your essay. However you go about starting to put information together, that's not exactly something, it is actually something on this case by case basis on how people start their essays, but as soon as they have the material to organize it, I believe it gets a little bit easier. I would say get at least one good introduction, body paragraph, conclusion, all the way to the end, and try to keep within the word count, but don't be too bugged out if you go a little bit over, because I guarantee you there will be some stuff cut out. <laughs> so as soon as you get this done, go to a writing center or to get someone to edit your paper. Other cool apps you can use. 
back when I was writing for a publication, something called HemingwayApp.com, I believe. I'm gonna put that link right here. It is where you can copy and you click the edit tab and you paste it into their system. And what the system will automatically do for free, by the way, is highlight points where they, the system itself thinks that you don't need an adverb or it especially catches, and I know this, in green highlighter when you brought, were using a passive voice. So go back to those sentences, reword them, think about how you can say it differently to be more active, and trust me, that'll be your savior because then you won't have so many edits that say passive voice on this, that, and this. So like an extra tip that I have is immersing your readers into your story. It's almost letting them see through your eyes or um, having them experience what you have through text. And that's really hard, but a lot of that includes some descriptive writing. It means getting cheesy stuff out before you get any good stuff out. So don't be afraid to really talk about your, what your surroundings are like and what inspires you specifically. I think about times when you're answering all of these questions that they apply to your real life, whether it happened the day before or weeks ago, we all have memories that stick with us where we learn specific things and just utilize that to be yourself in this essay. So there you go, write narratively. In maybe three days, <laughs> maybe one day, um, you can get all this work done. If you work really hard, you'll probably get a couple drafts out. Realistically, meeting with people that can read your essay will probably take a couple of days, especially, it depends on how available they are. So plan out that time enough so that you can get at least one draft read through. I, I went through a lot of them because I kept on feeling like it needed to be better, that I was missing something that I, couldn't really recognize, so I had to ask other people what they wish they had heard. So, after all that, you make the deadline and you wait for their decision. But, yeah, I'm hoping that was some sort of help. Yeah. I'll, ha I, like, hopefully I put, like, black text everywhere, but not black text, just text in general so that you may pause the video and start running through these exercises on your own and just get anything down. The biggest part of writing is just starting, and I know that is so overused, but starting is the most cringy, the most difficult part because it comes with a lot of self-loathing of why you can't focus sometimes. The first draft's gonna be bad, so remember that. <laughs> yeah, hopefully from this you get some sort of information on paper, and hopefully I didn't waste your time. Good morrow. Good morrow, good sir.